What's up guys? Welcome to PM101. Before we get to anything, I'm gonna have to show you a few clips of the Illinois classic, O'Reilly vs. Chalupi, and I want you to see if you can notice anything unique about how they use their nair. Did you see it? No? Alright, how about another clip? How about there? The thing I'm referring to is how he seems to get this and why it works so often. In this video, we'll be covering a subtle mechanic in PM that makes its combo tree unlike any other game, and you may not have noticed it. Today, I'm gonna show you a unique type of hit stun that was originally detailed by Eon on the PM subreddit. Before I can fully explain this mechanic, you'll have to know what non-tumble hit stun is. When a move gives low amounts of knockback, you enter non-tumble hit stun. It has a unique animation and it's indicated by a yellow overlay if you go into debug mode. When a character is in this type of hit stun, they won't enter a tech scenario when they touch the ground. Most of the time, if a character hits the ground in this state, they go through the standard air ground transition animation and the remaining hit stun gets canceled. From here, most characters go through about four frames of landing lag before being actionable. The scenario I explained earlier only tells what happens most of the time when you land during non-tumble stun. But there is a few exceptions to those rules. When you get put into non-tumble stun, there is a small window just after you get hit where the air ground transition won't happen normally and the character will experience the full duration of their original hit stun. The length of this window is based on the fall speed of the character. The faster you fall, the smaller the window for this hit stun extension is. For example, if you take a look at Jigglypuff, she has an 11 frame window to land during non-tumble hit stun and still experience the full duration of hit stun. If you look at Fox, there's only a 4 frame window for this. Now remember, if you land during this window, you take all of the hit stun frames that you would have experienced if you didn't land, plus 4 extra frames to land at the end of hit stun. Now that I've properly explained non-tumble hit stun, I'd like to introduce a new concept called stacked stun. For those that don't know, knockback stacking happens when two moves hit with 10 or more frames of separation. For the most part, all you really need to know about knockback stacking is that it adds the trajectory that you already have to the trajectory of the new move that you just got hit by. When a character experiences knockback stacking and non-tumble hit stun at the same time, the character will never experience the proper air ground transition until hit stun is completely finished. This is one of the reasons that PM's low percent combo game against fast fallers is so much more effective than it is in melee. There's only one way around this special window, and that's to ASDI or CC down. ASDI down will always allow you to land in the proper air ground transition. If you want to avoid the full duration of non-tumble hit stun and you aren't experiencing knockback stacking, you can always just ASDI up and avoid the window that extends hit stun after you land. So now that you know what stack stun is, here's a few examples of it being applied in game. The first one's really obvious. Falcon's Nair has a gap between hit one and two which means knockback stacking will happen if you land both hits. In melee, Falcon Nair to grab is much less reliable of a combo simply because the mechanic works differently in that game. Another really easy example to point out is Sonic up throw to dare. Sonic up throw dare regrab would be totally impossible on spaces if this mechanic didn't prevent them from landing. In this example here, Sonic is actionable 11 frames before Falco is, if stacked stun didn't exist, Sonic would actually be minus two on hit. Another example here is Falco Shine to Dare. Falco Shine Dare is another common example that you'll see in PM gameplay that doesn't happen in Melee. Proper use of the weak hit of Nair can actually get a lot of stacked stun on the opponent. Thanks for tuning in to my short tutorial on non-tumble hit stun and why it's unique in Product M. If you want to find out more about Project Plus, Project M, or just watch some sick Project M combos, then please subscribe to PM Nexus and tune in for more content.